what's going on guys welcome back to another view here on the samurai sports network and today you guys aren't getting the dolphins podcast but you are getting the 2018 nfl mock draft from me pre combine so i've been working on this and look i look at other mock drafts i probably looked at maybe five to six maybe even seven mock drafts uh and then also put my little twist in it some things that maybe might not happen some guys that bump up just you know making some fun out of it making it interesting for me and i'm gonna zoom in a little Let's see. Oh, no, just kidding. Wow, wow, nope, nope, wow. Let's get back a lot here. Nah, that's not what we were trying to do. There we go. So I just wanted to zoom in a little more. But, yeah, man, this is the, the 2018 NFL Mock Draft Pre-Combine. I hope you guys have been, you know, anticipating this. I hope you guys are excited for it because I am. I've been waiting to do it, uh, and I wanted to get mine done, and I was able to finish it today. I did the first, you know, up until probably the 24 picks uh for the previous two or three weeks and then now have kind of been able to do my own thing for the last one from 25 down to 32 and i made it interesting i made this with my own twist obviously so this is going to be you know you guys probably already looked at all of them anyways but this is probably going to be one of the things where you guys are like um what what are you talking about that player will never go there but look it's my twist all right it's my fun it's how i want to do it and it's still keeping some real in it, but it's my twist with a couple of them. So we start off here with pick number one, and that is the Cleveland Browns picking Sam Darnold. Now, I think this is one that we all universally think is going to happen. Some people think maybe Baker Mayfield or Saquon Barkley or yada, yada, this and yada, yada, that. Personally, I think that they go with Sam Darnold. I think they don't pass on a QB for the first time in the past two years. Uh, in the first round, they don't pass. They get their guy. They get Sam Darnold. Now, look. Uh, personally, this is supposed to be the best, you know, play now quarterback right now. Uh, I don't believe so. I believe that the best quarterback right now and the best one for the future will be Josh Rosen. Uh, so that's whatever, but Sam Donald seems to be the guy for Cleveland. Hopefully he is not one of the quarterbacks that goes to Cleveland and ends up burning. Second pick, we have Penn state running back Saquon Barkley. So, you know, a lot of people have Josh Rosen going here in their mocks to the New York giants, but I'm of the belief that the Giants really do believe in Eli Manning for at least another two to three years. And I think that they'll go look at quarterback later in the second, maybe even third, fourth uh, round. I think that they're definitely going to try to look to get a guy to compliment Eli Manning. And Saquon Barkley would be just the guy that the Giants have needed ever since Brandon Jacobs and Ahmad, uh, Ahmad Broadshaw, uh, you know what I'm talking about, have been gone. Uh, ever since they've been gone, they haven't had the same pieces that we all expect the Giants to have. They haven't had a running game at all. Uh, and their defense is up to par. They have the wide receivers and the quarterback. He's going to be a Hall of Famer, whether people like it or not. Get him a very good running back in Saquon Barkley. And that could be what we all thought would have been a Super Bowl team this season. Next pick. Now, the Colts, if, you know, it went Josh Rosen, Sam Darnold, Sam Darnold, Josh Rosen, whatever one you want to put it that way. Uh, would probably end up picking Saquon Barkley here to get a compliment to, you know, Andrew Luck. But instead, they go out and grab a defensive end that they much need, and that's Bradley Chubb. Now, this is kind of how all the mock drafts start. Uh, nothing different here. We all think that they're going to, you know, probably either go defense or Barkley. That's what the two things are right now. It's either Chubb or Barkley. Either way, they're going to get a top three, top four pick, depending how the draft falls. And, you know, Saquon Barkley is probably the best pick in the draft. So let's say it goes quarterback, quarterback, they'll get Barkley. But in this one, it goes quarterback, running back. Uh, so they get Bradley Chubb. Not bad to fall off on from Barkley. Bradley Chubb will be a good player for them. Uh, hopefully can develop into something. I'm not sure if they're running a 3-4 or a 4-3 in Indy now uh, with the new coach coming in. But should work out the way that they want it to. So we go into our next pick, which is the Cleveland Browns via Houston. So with this one. You got to go Minka Fitzpatrick. They have corner issues. They have safety issues. This guy can play all over the field as a corner, as a DB, wherever the hell you want to put him. He is that guy. And I think that Minka Fitzpatrick will be a great fit for the Cleveland Browns. You got him and Sam Darnold. That's two guys that you're coming out with that could be huge impacts. Last year, we thought that they had a great draft, but this year uh, could be something else. When they finally have their quarterback position, they have a lot of young talent. They just can't get that young talent around a QB. We saw what happened with the 49ers once they got their young talent. We'll see what can happen with the Browns if finally a quarterback can work. But here, they grab Minka Fitzpatrick. Now, at number five, we have UCLA's own Josh Rosen going to the Denver Broncos. Now, this is before free agency, so you never know. This entire mock draft can be changed by this one pick depending on what happens with Josh Rosen because... Let's say that he doesn't get picked by the Giants and the Browns pick Sam Darnold. Rosen can fall to either six 
or even later maybe to the Dolphins, which a lot of people have been predicting. So this could be very interesting because picks, you know, seven through 10 aren't going to need a quarterback. So if those two top quarterbacks aren't picked, unless someone trades up, Rosen and possibly, you know, Baker Mayfield could slide into the Dolphins lane or they could slide even into maybe you're looking at possibly the Bengals or the Cardinals or the Packers. You never know. Uh, or even farther into the draft, it could be a team that maybe has a quarterback for the future, like a Chargers, uh, to get one now. So it's interesting. But right now, I have him slotted. I think he's the perfect fit for the John Elway type of Broncos system uh, that they have there from management all the way down to coaching. I think he'll be a good fit. I don't think he'll be the savior of the job uh, of the coach in Denver, uh, but I think that he will be fine once a new coach comes in, probably an offensive mind. Vance Joseph probably going to have his last year of coaching uh, this season. New York Jets, now a lot of people want to put Baker Mayfield here, but I think the Jets are going to want to go with Lamar Jackson. Now, the reason why I think this is because I think that a lot of teams don't want the headache of Baker Mayfield, and I think putting him in New York might not be the greatest thing for people's eyes. Uh, so I think that the Jets are going to kind of think the same way and not put him in New York. Instead, grab a guy like Lamar Jackson, who could probably turn out to be a very good NFL quarterback. We've heard rumblings that he can be one, uh, and I truly believe he can. So it'll be interesting to see this, but I think the Jets are a perfect system fit for him. Once again, a situation where do I think he's saving the coach's job? No, I don't. I think the coach will end up being fired, uh, but an offensive coach that comes in that can run those RPOs will work perfectly with him. Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Now, they need offensive line help. and We've known that for years they've needed offensive line help. They get a very nice and good and stable offensive lineman out of Texas in Connor Williams. Fits that slot perfectly. Chicago Bears. They've needed a wide receiver. I mean, even when Alshon Jeffrey was there, they drafted Kevin White. He's been injury prone. He hasn't worked out. So, you got to grab a guy, and a lot of people would like to put Calvin Ridley here, but I'm putting Christian Kirk. I think that he's that kind of guy that can kind of be an Odell Beckham-like type player. Uh, I think that he could have a good future, and I think him in Chicago would fit well. I, you get some young talent around your young QB. You already didn't have, you know, you didn't have the best year last year, but you didn't have a bad year. You're not in that top five pick uh, where you need to get a quarterback, obviously. You have your quarterback for the future. Get some young talent. Do good in free agency. This pick could be huge for them. Then we go to San Francisco 49ers. Now, although a lot of people would like to mock uh, Quentin Nelson here or any other kind of offensive lineman, I'm going with the wild card and mocking Calvin Ridley. I think you, you know, they already have a pretty talented wide receiver core in San Francisco, but you bring a guy like Calvin Ridley to hook up with a guy like Jimmy Garoppolo. Not only will you have your wide receiver be learning from one of the best young quarterbacks in the NFL. He is going to be learning under a great offensive system with Kyle Shanahan, which fits perfectly for a young person's future. Now, this all depends on what Calvin Ridley turns out to be. I'm not saying he's going to be the next Calvin Johnson or Julio Jones, uh, but he'll be put in the perfect system for him to thrive and succeed and could very well be a playoff wide receiver in his very first year. Oakland Raiders. So this one is one that's very interesting to me because I don't really know who to mock to them. You know, you can think about so many different people. They don't need guard help. So Quentin Nelson's not going to be the guy there. So I ultimately picked Derwin James. I think that Derwin James could be that guy to finally give them a cover safety. He's a guy that will probably end up playing free safety, not strong safety for them. Uh, but I think that he can be a very impactful player on their defense and kind of resurrect their defense a little bit. Not like a Charles Woodson, but kind of get that guy back. And I think that uh, a guy like John Gruden would kind of see that in him. Number 11, now this is the one that a lot of people will probably like and maybe want to hear my opinion on, is Roquan Smith to the Miami Dolphins. Now, I highly doubt that he falls this far considering the talent in this draft. I mean, especially this first round is just absolutely insane. The first 16 picks, you're going to get a top 10, top 5 player, you know, depending on how the quarterback situation, uh, you know, falls down. And for the Dolphins, since they don't get the quarterback of the future in Josh Rosen, and I don't see them drafting Baker Mayfield, I honestly think it's a smokescreen. Uh, they get their guy at linebacker in Roquan Smith, adding him to a linebacker core that needs talent. You have him, you have a guy coming off of injury. Uh, and then you also have Kiko Alonso. Uh, and you, you know, you had a guy in, I can't remember the name right now, but you had a guy in Stefan Anthony uh, that came along very well towards the end of the season last year. So you add Kiko Alonso, you know, Raekwon McMillan, Roquan James, and Stefan Anthony. You have three guys with speed, and then Kiko who can tackle, not good in coverage, so he doesn't have to be in on those coverage downs. So 
This works perfectly. Everybody gets what they want in this situation for the Dolphins. And I think they come out of round one feeling very happy about themselves. Now, because I didn't have Quentin Nelson going higher, you go and you fall to the Bengals. They lost their best offensive lineman in Kevin Zeitler last season in the offseason. Now you get a guy who many have said is pretty much a copy of, um, I can't remember his name right now, but the, you know, the guard that's on the Dallas Cowboys. So they, a lot of people say he's basically a, a clone of him, a copy, carbon copy of him. So they get their man right there. Now with Washington, you guys know I don't say Washington blah, I say Washington or I say Washington, Washington. So Washington gets their receiver for the future. They've been drafting receivers and drafting receivers. They've been trying to get receivers. And now they get Alex Smith, a good guy. You know, he loses Tyreek Hill because obviously now he's from, you know, Kansas City. Now he's in Washington. And they get a guy like Cortland Sutton. I think this is a very good fit for them. I think that he'll thrive. Now, this is one where I'm sure a lot of you people have stayed and tried to listen, even if you're not a Dolphins fan, just to see what the hell is he thinking. But hear me out for a second. I think that this could be a very interesting pick to have Baker Mayfield go to the Green Bay Packers. Now, you have the injury concerns, and I don't think that the Packers really believe that Brett Hundley is their future quarterback after Aaron Rodgers is gone. But with the injury concerns of Aaron Rodgers, who better for him to learn behind to be a professional then Aaron Rodgers with Baker Mayfield sitting there. Now, I don't think that Aaron Rodgers' days are numbered, but with the injury concerns, it wouldn't be shocking to see him either released or traded anytime soon. It sounds weird, but if they can get their quarterback of the future like Baker Mayfield, he can fit in probably perfectly fine, and I think that he'll fit that offense. I don't think he'll fit the scenery, but it could be an interesting way to kind of bring him up as a professional. Arizona Cardinals, since Baker Mayfield doesn't fall to them just one pick away, they get an offensive tackle in Orlando Brown. Baltimore Ravens, drafting defensive lineman slash linebacker, probably an outside linebacker to fit their 3-4, to be that guy when Terrell Suggs is gone in Arden Key. And what a freaking guy to learn behind then Terrell Suggs, going into an outstanding situation. Los Angeles Chargers, Tremaine Edmonds, they, they need linebacker help, and we all know this, and Tremaine Edmonds is a guy that's going to go in there and help them tremendously. They have great pass rushers off the edge. They run that 3-4 scheme. Having Tremaine Edwards to be that kind of linebacker defensive end, you could even rush him if you want to. Great on the field, great product, a huge slam dunk pick for the Chargers. Seattle Seahawks, they need offensive line help. They got a tackle last year from the Texans. Now they get another tackle in the draft in Mike McGlinchey, I don't know how to say his name. Dallas Cowboys, Boston College, Harold Landry. Now, assuming that they don't work out something with Demarcus Lawrence, since they also need to work out something with their offensive guard, whose name I still can't remember, uh, you draft Harold uh, Landry. Not going to be the same guy as Demarcus Lawrence, but you don't want to pay Demarcus Lawrence upwards of seventeen to eighteen million dollars based off of one good season. That's how you get yourself deep into cap situations that don't help you. Detroit Lions. Look, we, they've needed running back help for a long time, just like the New York Giants. And in this one, the Lions get Darius Geis. He's nowhere near the player that Saquon Barkley is. But Darius Geis is that power runner, that, that Detroit offense, and you know that guy that uh, Matt Patricia is going to want to build around. Even though he's not the offense coordinator, he's got that guy now, and he's that brute force that he can really have. And you know he's a very good complement to an Amir Abdullah or anyone else you want to put on the roster. These ones are the interesting ones. Buffalo Bills, Buffalo Bills. I have them doing Denzel Award, so they get two nice corners, which pisses me off as a Dolphins fan. And then they get a nice wide receiver in James Washington to replace what they lost uh, in Sammy Watkins last season. Los Angeles Rams pick Ohio State center Billy Price. Now, the Rams don't necessarily definitely need offensive line help, but this is a very valuable and very nice pick for them at 23. Panthers pick Texas linebacker Malik Jefferson. At 24, Titans select UTSA Marcus Davenport. Then the Falcons select Alabama Deron Payne. And the New Orleans Saints select quarterback out of Wyoming Josh Allen. He's someone who everyone has complained and complained and complained about his accuracy issues. But what a better guy to learn about and to learn the quarterback mechanics and how, you know, everything in the NFL works than a guy like... Drew Brees, I mean, you get him, and look, you're not telling Drew in four years we're getting you out, blah, 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 we're getting you out. You're saying, look, you love New Orleans. We want to keep you here. We're working on a deal for you. Can you help us teach this guy to be our quarterback of the future when you're ultimately gone? And that ultimately gone might happen 
next year. It could happen two years from now, but they could get a guy that can learn behind Drew Brees, someone who has all the intangibles, but that accuracy just isn't there yet. Very valuable pick, though, at 27. Pittsburgh Steelers. Now, I don't really know necessarily what the Steelers need, but I'm throwing a defensive tackle into this one. Uh, Steel Jedi, if you watch this video, if you help me out, I don't really know. Jacksonville Jaguars. Now, this one I think is very interesting because they don't have a solid tight end. They obviously still have Mercedes Lewis. Get a guy like Hayden Hurst who could fall into the second round, who could fall into the first round, uh, but you grab him there at 29. Maurice Hurst goes right after the Minnesota Vikings. And then the New England Patriots grab running back, or excuse me, cornerback out of Iowa, Joshua Jackson. You lose a guy uh, in free agency like a Malcolm Butler because obviously you're not going to pay him. You grab a guy like Joshua Jackson to learn in that Patriot way, that Patriot system, and he can be a great compliment to Stephon Gilmore. Could be something very scary for AFC East opponents. And look, Although it's not the biggest thing right now, you have LeGarrette Blount who's going to be in a free agency. You have Jay Ajayi, but he has knee issues. And you have um, Clement. Get a guy as a Justin Case and Ronald Jones. You never, oh, excuse me, you never know what could happen. I think this is a pretty valuable pick. All right, guys, I hope you did enjoy my mock draft. 16 minutes of fun, personally. A lot of talking for me, a lot of sounding like this. <laughs> it's kind of fun, I got to admit. I do have a little bit of a, a headache now, though. I'm going to have to go get some water. Hope you guys did very much enjoy this. I'm sorry that there is no Miami Dolphins mock draft. I will see you guys next time, and as always, peace.